of RC Nitro for Dummies. In this video, what I'm going to explain to you is how to start a Nitro RC car. I'm actually very excited about this video because it's something that I've been wanting to put together for some time. And the way that I'm going to do this is a little bit different. There's a lot of videos out there on how to start your Nitro uh, cars, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start three different cars that haven't been started in, in varying times and we'll troubleshoot the different uh, aspects of it on um, how to get it started assuming that they don't start. Now, really I don't expect any problems, knock on wood, starting any of uh, my cars today. But if I do, that's fine because then what we'll do is together we'll walk through and I'll show you the trouble shooting steps that I take. Once again, assuming that everything starts fine, I'm still going to go over the different troubleshooting steps for you because obviously if you're watching this video, this video is for you. You're new to the hobby and you need to know how to start your Nitro vehicle. Now, one of the things I want to tell you is, this is very, very important. When I first got a Nitro RC car, I was, you know, very impatient. I wanted to start it and, you know, my, my thinking was, all right, how do, I didn't know how to start. I was like, all right, what do I do here? What am I supposed to do? And I didn't really know anything whatsoever. So I went online and I, I, I read a few articles, but those articles were really long. And then I went on YouTube and there were these long videos on how to do it. And I kept fast forwarding, fast forwarding. And I was like, I don't have time for all this BS. I just need to know how to start it. Well, that was my mistake. And the end result of that was this right here. And this is a broken connecting rod. In other words, I threw a rod the very first time that I ever started a Nitro RC car. And um, from there, it kind of went into a tailspin. That's why I have such a, I guess, a close relationship, if you will, with the Exceed Forza, the Professor. Because from here, it came to trying to fix the engine, getting a new engine, putting the old one back on, all that good stuff. In a way, it was good because I learned a whole lot about it. But my point is that um, in hindsight, if I really took the time to understand everything that there is to know about starting an engine, and more importantly, why you're doing what you're doing, then um, I would have saved myself, I think, a lot of time and, and obviously a little bit of money. So anyways, here, this is probably going to be a two um, a two part video, just because first of all, you guys know I ramble a lot, and and because I have a lot of important things to say, and second of all, it is very very important. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to start three different cars that haven't been started. We'll troubleshoot starting them if they don't start, and then um, toward the end, I'm going to talk about all the little things that you need to know about starting your RC car. So we'll go ahead and get started with the LOC 810. This thing is dirty and I can't wait to get in there and clean this. That's a whole nother story. I'm gonna take it bashing soon. But this car here needs a, needs a deep cleaning on it. So that's gonna happen. Forgive the looks of it. Um, uh, anyways, um, obviously the very first thing you want to ensure you do is you put fuel in the fuel tank. So we're going to put a little bit of fuel here. Not a whole lot. I mean, I typically do fill them up all the way to the top, but just because I don't feel like driving each of these around all, all night to a full tank of gas, I'm just going to put a little bit on there. Next thing, I like to turn the car on. This is just me. It's not needed. It may sound like a stupid question because I didn't even know it first when, when I got into this, but yes, the car can, the engine can start no problem whatsoever. It's not dependent on the batteries. It's not dependent on the car being turned on or anything like that. So the reason that I do like to turn the, uh, the receiver and the transmitter on is because the carburetor opening might shift a little bit when it's on. I like to at least start it at the setting that, it, that it's going to be at. Um, when it's when it's at an idle position, we'll talk more about that a little bit later. The next thing, glow plug. I have a video on um, what glow plugs are and what they're about, but just make sure that your glow plug is charged. Whether you have the recharging type or, or the type that uses a battery, 
I've seen some videos that recommend you take out your glow plug before starting your car and checking it. Really, that's not needed. Once again, if you feel confident that your glow uh, plug starter is charged and ready to go, then just go ahead and try it first. If not, then we, we get into checking the glow plug in, in the starter. So at this point, really all you're looking to do is prime the engine. And um, that just simply means getting fuel that's uh, coming from the fuel tank through the pipe, the, the, excuse me, the fuel tubing, into the actual carburetor right here. Every car is a little bit different. All three of my cars prime at a different rate, if you will. And so you, you'll kind of get that feel for it. But um, I would definitely say give it uh, maybe two pulls at a max of maybe three, especially if your engine is new. And with that said, much of this video again is um, kind of a, a beginner troubleshooting guide. So the assumption is that your, your engine is new um, or it's very new and there haven't been a lot of modifications made to it. Once again, in part two, I will get into a little bit more of advanced troubleshooting. But really, to, to prime it, you place your finger over, they call this the stinger. This is on the exhaust pipe. Place it very tightly over the stinger of the exhaust, and you pull maybe three times. And then from there, take your glow plug igniter. I've done a video on, on how these work. Just ensure it's charged. I've seen some videos that say, um, you know, you, you need to take your glow plug out every time and, and check to make sure that it's it's working. Now, that's really not needed, I promise you. As long as, as, as you feel your charger is charged up and, and the glow plug is working and, and whatnot, just go ahead and try it first. Um, and if you have problems, then you can begin troubleshooting. When you're putting it in, obviously, hold it down and make sure it's getting a good connection onto the to the glow plug. And I do that, I, I kind of pull it up a little bit just to make sure that it's on there. All right, so at this point, you start it. And it's very easy. Um, as I mentioned, every car is a little bit different, but, but the one constant is you just want to give it some short, quick pulls. All right, so this hasn't started. And uh, this is kind of good because in my mind it should have started by now. So let's troubleshoot a little bit. The very first thing that I think is maybe it needs to be primed a little bit more. So I'm going to give it, put my finger over the stinger, and I'm going to try it one more time. And we'll see. And that was it. So there you go. Again, we'll get more into detail on all of that. to hold my finger over there so hopefully you can hear me but I guess where I went was um, it's it's all a balancing act between being primed enough and not primed enough and all of that so um, anyways that's the first card looks good